a team of creative students established an innovative design studio focused on collaboration and learning. I'm Ball State President Jeff Mearns. Find out more about how Studio 165 Plus is helping our students forge connections that extend beyond our campus and into the community. That's next on Cardinal Compass, Campus and Community Conversations. From the campus of Ball State University on Ball State PBS and Indiana Public Radio, this is Cardinal Compass, Campus and Community Conversations. At Ball State University, our promise is simple, to empower the success of our students. Our students benefit from immersive learning, innovative academic programs, and state-of-the-art facilities. Ball State offers a distinctive yet affordable educational experience and the ideal environment to prepare for a fulfilling career and a meaningful life. We inspire Cardinals to transform their communities, to revolutionize their industries, and to make a difference. We fly. Are you ready to fly? Hello and welcome to Cardinal Compass. I'm Courtney Simmons. And I'm Micaiah Knowles. Studio 165 Plus is a student-led graphic design studio that provides real-world application. That real-world experience comes from the work they do for local businesses as well as other organizations within the community. Austin Sheets reports how students are designing their future in the studio. Ball State Studio 165 Plus organization has been the state-of-the-art student immersive learning program that aims toward collaboration, learning, and a positive impact toward reshaping the Muncie community. Studio 165 Plus, while it's based at Ball State, really has a larger impact on the community of Muncie as a whole. We have a few projects where we've done that really directly. Um, there is a sector called Building Better Neighborhoods, where Studio 165 Plus was able to create um, logo identities for a lot of different neighborhoods in Muncie. The program helps students to gain real-world experience. It also prepares students to connect with real-world clients, building relationships, and helps them form problem-solving skills on immersive hands-on projects. It's really cool getting this experience since it's different from like a normal class here at Ball State where you're mainly just doing your own design projects, but when you're in Studio 165 Plus you're collaborating as a team and you get to work with real clients in the field, so it's super cool. Pomierski is eager to learn more about leadership and gaining communication skills, but there is one thing she is proud of. I've gotten so much better at making decisions quickly and just knowing like what my strengths and weaknesses are and knowing what other people's strengths and weaknesses are and just kind of like tailoring things to them. Um, yeah, so it's been really great just kind of finding my voice and helping other people find their voice as well. Ma Horder describes the major changes Studio 165 Plus has made since she graduated back in 2021 such as different logo identities and current projects. So that's really gratifying to see that the pieces that I worked on are actually continuing on throughout um, new members of Studio 165 Plus. Studio 165 Plus hopes to continue to expand connections with building new projects with new members in the Muncie area. Austin Sheets, Cardinal Compass. Joining us now is Shantanu Suman, instructor of Studio 165 Plus. Shantanu. Thank you for joining us. Thank you so much for inviting me. So, um, Shantanu, for the people who don't know what One Studio 65 Plus is, can you explain and what does it have to offer? Uh, so, St Studio 165, um, what we put on our website is basically it's a student run design studio. I would say student and faculty run design studio, but it's also um, uh, School of Art elective course. It's, it's, it's a class, it's a course where students have to sign up. Uh, and I would put emphasis on the word elective because it's not a requirement. It's something that students uh, have to choose and uh, sign up for. Um, if, and we provide actually a, a, almost a real world application to design. So we work with uh, uh, clients, uh, it's an industry application. It's almost like applying for a job. So they have to submit their portfolio. Uh, in a way, they have to submit a cover letter. And um, in general, like uh, more 20, 25 students apply every semester, sometimes more than that. And we pick 12 to 14 students every uh, semester um, and form two design teams who get to work on uh, projects that are local, regional, national, 
um, and in a couple of cases, international projects as well. That's awesome. Seems like a very competitive process to get into. So what would you say uh, is the inspiration between behind Studio 165 Plus? So I, I don't know if I want to say that it's uh, necessarily an inspiration, but um, it was more of a decision. I remember when I was hired in um, 2016, the then School of Art director, um, at that point, we basically decided that we needed a course that focused on industry ex industry experience. And uh, courses like this already existed um, around the country in different uh, uh, design programs. So it wasn't a new concept. But I would definitely say that Studio 165 over the years has grown. Um, and I've had the um, uh, privilege of presenting about Studio 165 and the, uh, our students' work at different conferences. I've also provided consultations. And when I, like, I mean, I have been asked to help other universities or other programs that um, are running similar uh, studios to help them grow. And that's when I realized that what we are actually doing um, is pretty significant and, and it's very different. Um, for the most part, I would say that uh, our involvement with the community, and it's almost like building relationships mm -hmm. um, and it's engagement uh, at, at the core. Um, students are able to sign up for Studio 165 Plus uh, for more than one semester. So there's a continuation, not just in their enrollment, but also in terms of the projects that we work on. We can work on projects that are not limited to a semester, but it has a longer lifetime. Um, and then also because of that continuity, we have been fortunate to work on projects that have uh, lasted more than a couple years. Uh, so that has been pretty significant for us in our success. Um, and as I said, like relationship, it's not just about students because obviously the students are going out in the community. Uh, they are building relationship with the local community members, mm -hmm. but also like I live in the community. So it's uh, the things that I bring to the table is beyond just like teaching design. It's not just uh, teaching software, but also the soft skills that we um, have to implement in our process. And that last point that Shantanu was making about the continuity of those relationships, the ability for a project to be sustained is very important. I remember shortly after I arrived when I was kind of doing a listening tour out in the community, many people in the community were really grateful for the engagement of our students and their faculty, but sometimes they felt that, that the period of time was kind of arbitrary because it was based around the semester. Yeah. So to develop these kinds of relationships and programs, immersive learning programs, that have the capacity to go beyond that semester timeline is beneficial for the students, but it's really beneficial for the community as well. Awesome, thank you so much. So um, how has Studio 165 Plus impacted communities? I would love for both of you to answer this question. So when I think of community, um, our community is not just the local community. Obviously, that's like the first community um, that we think of. Um, but it's also our students, our faculty, our alumni. Um, so let me see if I can um, talk about each of those communities separately. So for example, our local regional community, uh, or the community partners, if I would say. Um, our work, it's obviously research focused, uh, we focus on student learning opportunities, but it's also result focused. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of times what happens with student learning opportunities um, is that um, because it's based on a semester basis, like we don't have enough time to provide results that might actually be helpful. Um, and with Studio 165, because it's not so much focused on a semester, we can continue those projects. We can also focus on results that will be helpful eventually. So I think that is definitely helpful. Um, building relationships um, for the students, it's learning the soft skills. As I said, like I mean, it, design, personally for me, I don't think of design as just uh, uh, teaching software or mm -hmm. a tool. It's more about like the interpersonal skills, um, time management, how do they work with people, how do they work collaboratively, not as a design team, but also with our community members. Um, we have completed seven years of Studio 165. A lot of our students who have graduated are very successful designers, entrepreneurs in the industry, and uh, they really want to give back to, uh, to not just the design program, the university, um, 
as well, but uh, one of the things that we were able to start this year is a mentorship program. It's a 10-week mentorship program where the alums who graduated, and it's not just Studio 165, it's from the design program itself. Um, but most of those students graduated from Studio 165, and they are working with our current students to, um, to help them with like developing some of these professional practices as well. Yeah. Well, so, really so quickly. I, yeah, so if I can just amplify two points. One is the continued engagement of graduates in the learning exercise mm -hmm. for our students is an important part of the program. And also one of the other things I heard when I was in the community was sometimes when we were engaged in projects from the university that our friends and neighbors felt a little more like they were research subjects and that they weren't necessarily beneficiaries. And this is a perfect example about how a project that can be beneficial, a learning project for our students under the guidance of faculty, can produce real tangible, practical benefits for the community. So it's a win-win for all of the partners. For Shantanu, really quickly, um, how would you describe Studio 165 Plus in one word? Collaboration. OK. Perfect. President Mearns? I would say partnership. That same, that's a collaboration is the essence of a partnership. And that's what, uh, when we talk about the advantage of those partnerships between the university and the community, this is a great example. I love that. Amazing. I'm glad we can all agree on that. So thank you, Shantanu. One of the many partnerships Studio 165 Plus has is with Radiant Cinema here at Ball State University. Darren Cobb reports how the partnership got its lights, camera, and action. Radiant Cinema, one of Studio 165 Plus's clients, is a collaborative immersive learning program between the Department of Media and the Department of Theater and Dance. We call it the handshake across the street. The handshake that we've created, we hope more people want to, you know, grab onto those hands. That's, that's the object. Radiance isn't your typical class, however. The professors work to provide their students with as close to a real-world film experience as possible. Radiance provides like a home for a lot of students here on campus who are really passionate about making films uh, and don't necessarily have a place to express that passion. Every student enrolled in the course has the opportunity to work in a multitude of positions. We want to try to provide as many opportunities for students to seek out the type of work that they want to explore. Once Cabis and Strack decided they needed to give their program a logo, they went multiple routes, from trying to make one themselves to giving the assignment to some of their production students. Eventually, they met with Studio 165 Plus, and the result rendered them speechless. We were so impressed with the presentations, we couldn't talk. <laughs> we just kind of said, um, we're going to need a little time to process this. Senior Anna McCreary was one of the students who designed Radiance's logo. McCreary's favorite part of her experience with Studio 165 Plus is the experience itself. That has been my favorite and probably the most beneficial of getting you prepared because it's just different overall. Like it's nothing like a classroom setting. It's completely like a functioning studio. Both Cabis and Strack have bright plans for the future of Radiant Cinema. Right now we're just an immersive program that's interdepartmental. I think we do wonder about creating a new degree program that is actually intersecting between theater and media. Darren Cobb, Cardinal Compass. Joining us now is Heather Williams, Program Manager of Building Better Neighborhoods, another community partner of Studio 165 Plus. Heather, thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. So Heather, how has Building Better Neighborhoods affected the Muncie community and what is its connection to Ball State? So uh, my program began uh, 10 years ago. I was hired by the university to come in and bring the resources of Ball State University out into the neighborhoods. Because our goal was really to um, break down that perceived town-gown divide. We really wanted to make sure that Ball State students and faculty and staff were out in Muncie's neighborhoods and Muncie residents felt more connected to our university. Yeah. And, and the program, you know, as, as Heather knows, the university was engaged with the community in many respects, but often that engagement was with larger companies, larger organizations, foundations, institutions. And what Heather and her colleagues do is meet our friends and neighbors in their neighborhoods, in their communities where they live, where they raise their children, where they go to school, so that we can hear the voices and interests and perspectives of the people throughout the community and bring their interests mm -hmm. and their opportunities back to campus so we can engage with everyone uh, here in the community. Lovely, so who was the start of uh, Building Better Neighborhoods? 
Well, it initially uh, was grant funded by the Ball Brothers Foundation. So um, I was hired back in 2014, so I just had my um, 10 year anniversary uh, as an, a Ball State employee, uh, which is really exciting. Um, and I was able to really build that program from the ground up. Um, we just knew that we wanted to make sure that faculty and staff um, were out in our neighborhoods, that our residents felt connected back to Ball State. Um, so really I was able to go into the neighborhood associations, go into the community centers, um, have conversations, um, attend neighborhood meetings, and just really listen, and listen to hear um, what the residents said that they needed and what the neighbor neighborhood said that they needed so that I could make those kind of matches between faculty and the neighborhoods. And how many different neighborhood associations do you coordinate with? Oh my gosh. Um, well, actually I was canvassing earlier this week to start another one. So uh, right now we have about 32 active neighborhood wow. associations in the city of Muncie, and that's really unique. Um, when you go into a lot of communities, they might have one or two historic neighborhoods, um, but Muncie, our map, we're broken into a city of neighborhoods, um, and that's been the case since about the 1960s. So we already have those kind of established areas of our city to work with, which makes my job a little bit easier. Mm -hmm. Well, um, you already mentioned how long you've been working with Building Better Neighborhoods, but within those 10 years, um, can you tell me a brief story of like one of the best successes that you've had within those 10 years? Um, I know that um, you know, you've already kind of heard from Studio 165, but to be honest, they are a part of every single presentation that I do about building better neighborhoods because the work that the students have done out in the community um, has really made a difference. It's been transformational. Um, I'm also the president of the Muncie Action Plan, which is our community planning organization. Yes. And um, one of the, the tenants, one of the things that we've been working on over the last 15 years is pride and image in our community. And uh, the work that the students do, um, it may seem simple, you know, it's really not because I'm not a designer, but to, to work with neighborhoods to build a logo, to build a brand, that's huge. Because now people have something that they can put on t-shirts, they can put on signs, they can put on flags that they, you know, they fly in front of their houses. Um, and MAP has been able to take those images and uh, get them out so that folks in the neighborhood see it and they think to themselves, I'm a part of something. I am a member of Riverside Normal City Neighborhood Association. I am a Southsider. And they can look at that image and, and it really does build uh, pride in the neighborhoods. That's so heartwarming, mm -hmm. I love that. How would you uh, describe your partnership with Studio 165 Plus today? Well, I've had the opportunity um, really to work with the students and with Chantanu probably since the inception of the program. I know I, I've been working with them for um, at least six years. And um, just to see uh, you know, that growth, we worked at the beginning to build, to do logos, right? And then we developed marketing materials so that we could get those out to new residents to welcome people into the neighborhood. We also created um, packets for um, realtors so that when realtors are going out, they can say, this is what's special about this neighborhood. This is how long it's been here. This is the timeline of its development. Um, this is how close you are to these amenities. So they've developed a number of different materials for us. And, and right now we're working with them um, to really uh, get the word out about the Neighborhoods American Rescue Plan funding because we were funded a million dollars by the City of Muncie. Uh, the City of Muncie gave the Muncie Action Plan a million dollars to micro-grant out to the neighborhoods. And so um, uh, Studio 165 and their students have been creating um, social media posts for us so that we can get that word out across the community so that people who maybe aren't connected to their neighborhood association understand that that those volunteers are doing work for everyone. So how has working with Studio 165 Plus been similar or different working between working with other immersive programs with Ball State? Um, I would say that you know one of the things that makes Studio 165 um, so unique is that continuity of the relationship. Um, we know that, you know, in fact, I've been working with the same students now for um, at least two semesters, which, as you all know, you know students elect to take classes, um, but they elect to take this course because it is so special, I think, and that they're able to build these long-term relationships with community partners. So I, I really like that about the program. Um, we also work uh, closely with uh, students in the College of Architecture and Planning because a lot of, of planning kind of overlaps with neighborhood work. Um, but the, the graphic design work that the students do is just top-notch and it's not something that um, 
is just an average skill, right? Like the, these students bring something to the neighborhoods that's really special. President Burns, would you like to weigh in just a yeah, short Yeah, and, and I think what it shows is the capacity when you have faculty who are working in close partnership with students, who are engaging them in practical experiential learning opportunities that provide direct, you know, direct benefits uh, to our friends and neighbors. Um, that's what makes a Ball State such a distinctive institution. Mm -hmm. So how would you describe uh, Building Better Neighborhoods in one word if you could? Oh gosh, I'm a cheater, collaborative. <laughs> <laughs> would you like to add a word? I would say a, a partnership. So I think yeah. that I think we're all uh, in sync because uh, it is a special program and I think it shows the alignment among mm -hmm. all of us and the community as well. Awesome, I love the theme we have going on today. <laughs> yeah. So thank you, that is uh, all the time we have for this part of the discussion. And President Mearns, you want to turn it over to you for our final minute to give your reflections on today's conversation. Sure. Micaiah and Courtney, thank you very much for giving us the opportunity to share this with a broader audience. As I said just a moment ago, I think this uh, program really demonstrates a distinctive Ball State education. It's our students working in close collaboration with extraordinary faculty. It's providing them creative students with a way to show them a path forward to how they can use those creative talents to build a career and how that career, their passion, their creativity, will benefit not just themselves and their family, not just the organization they work for, but our friends and neighbors throughout the community. It makes me feel so proud uh, to, to serve here at Ball State University. So thank you for this opportunity. Thank you. Awesome. Well, thank you, President Mearns. I'm Courtney Simmons. And I'm Micaiah Nalls. Be sure to join us next time for Cardinal Compass Campus and Community Conversations. At Ball State University, we welcome you as a learning partner from day one. Our students bring creativity and determination to each aspect of the learning experience, from the classroom to the community. At Ball State, we help students turn an emerging passion into an enduring purpose. Our beautiful campus, welcoming environment, immersive learning, and collaborative culture provide the ideal place for you to pursue your journey to a fulfilling career and a meaningful life. We fly. Are you ready to fly?